Hey, Pajama Grandma, in my favorite robe, back at ya, talking about what's working. This is the first part, and it's where I like to start when I'm working with somebody and coaching them through this process, because I think that so often the world beats us up and focuses on what we're not doing right. I don't want to do that. I want to start with what's working. What are we doing right? What is awesome about the business that we're creating now? Because what we want to do is we want to build on those things and, and get more of them because that's how we're best serving our customers or clients. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, as part of the SWOT analysis, which I shared that document with you already, you should have downloaded that worksheet so that you can go along and work through the next two parts of the scavenger hunt with me or not. It's totally up to you, but it is an incredible resource that has actually made hundreds of millions of dollars for various organizations that I've worked for and tens of millions of dollars for me and my industry and my businesses. So I would just say it is a really good tool. And if you're not using it, then pick another one that does the same or similar things for you because we need to, remember I said this is the hardest part, but we need to be always taking a look at the results we're getting. And if the results we're getting in an area are great right, and good and what we want, we wanna build on those. And if they're not, we need to look at those two and say, what else is possible? How can I make this work? How can we improve this? You know, how can I? How can I is one of my favorite questions now. Or how can we make this better? What is possible? And what else is possible is another one of my favorite questions. You'll learn as you get exposed to me more. You'll know that those are my go-to things. Because if we're not open-minded, guess what? That's going to go on the what's not working thing. And that's an example of where we as the business owner might be part of the problem or part of the bottleneck to our supersizing our businesses and getting the growth that we want. So let's talk about what's working. What's working? We want, when we're looking at what's working and what's not working, we're gonna look for results. Now, the first question is, what are you tracking? Are you tracking anything in your business? I know a lot of business owners because I work with all different size businesses that aren't tracking anything. They're looking at their sales month to month and they're, that's about it. They're doing their financials once a quarter for taxes or once a year if they're a really small business and they don't really know what's going on from a number standpoint in their business. So they don't know if they're really getting good results or not. I mean, they might be thinking that the sales numbers are climbing, but when they look at their profitability at the end of the year or at the end of each month or the end of each period, they might find that, yeah, they made a, you know, 200% more income and growth sales this year, but their expenses went up 225%. So they actually lost money and lost profitability. So we want to know what's working. So what's working from, and we do that by looking at results and numbers. So there's got to be a couple things, at least one key number that we're looking at in our business. I'm going to say every day, but it's different for each business. Some businesses don't need to look at things every day, but I I tend to think that if you're in a retail business or a sales type business, you need to look at your sales number every day. If you're in a, and what we pay attention to expands and grows. What we don't pay attention to shrinks and deteriorates. So that's why you want to carefully pick what it is you're paying attention to. So for example, retail sales, what are my daily sales? In an online business, it might be how many um, new people is, are coming into my business every day or how many leads am I getting? It might be, again, how many sales or how many conversions am I getting in a particular step in my sales process? It's going to be different for each of our businesses, but we want to know what's working based on the results. And so we want to have a couple ways of actually subjectively quantifying that and measuring that. Now, if you're a coach or an author, there might be a different thing that you need to look at. Maybe your primary objective and your primary way of growing your business is to be a speaker as an author. And so you want to get a certain number of speaking engagements booked for each month or maybe one a week or something, whatever your goal is to supersize your particular business. And so that's going to be different, but that's the thing that you want to be looking at because that's the result you want. We always want to find a way to subjectively quantify how we look at the result we want. And it's, for most businesses, it's, it's sales. It's not just gross sales, though. It's profitability. I will tell you, tell you one of the mistakes I made early on in some of my businesses is I was 
maximizing sales, but I wasn't maximizing profitability. And I don't maximize profitability by not serving people really well. I maximize it by serving people really well. And that way I serve more people. Um, but I, I found that it's more important to look at the profitability of what you're doing than it is to look at just the gross sales. But gross sales is a quick and easy number and it's usually a sexy, exciting number that people like to look at. So that's totally an aside. That's, that's, we haven't even talked about what's working. So we wanna look at our organization and our business and we wanna say what's working. Um, and again, it's gonna be different for your business than it is for mine, than it is for Joe's, than it is for Tabitha's, than it is for Bert's, than it is for Ernie's. It's gonna be different for each one of us. That's why we need to do this exercise. We need to say, okay, what's working out really well for my business and what, how does that match what I personally love to do? Those are really good questions to ask. So just start in your notebook, brainstorming and writing out a list of what's working think of what's working just from a systems and business standpoint and processes and things that you use already and are doing already maybe your um, sales system and your sales calling system and your contacting and your customer interaction is working really really well write that down maybe your technology maybe you have some patented technology or some really unique process or way of doing something that's working really, really well. That's one of your competitive advantages. So we wanna think about what are all of our strengths right now? What's working for our company and for my business right now? What are my strengths? Then we also wanna look at what are my opportunities? And opportunities come when we look at our market, when we do some, some spy work and some investigation, and we look at our market and we find out, well, what's going on in the world? What's going on in this market? What do our customers need the most? And I'm not sure that we had the discussion, I don't think we did, about our ideal customer and our target audience. If we need to revisit that, will you please put in the comments below, ideal customer or ICA, ideal client, comment somehow if you want more information on that and if you want me to do a, a video or a quick lesson or training on that. Because if you don't know who you're going for, you're in big trouble and that would actually go in tomorrow's scavenger hunt lesson what's not working because if you don't know who you're going for and who you're targeting and who your ideal client is that's definitely a weakness and will put you at a competitive disadvantage moving forward in the world we live in today but we're working on strengths and opportunities today so strengths write them all down write down everything that's working out well in your organization everything you're happy with the results you're getting now just this is just a snapshot of where you are right now today this isn't where you're going to be in the future it's just what the reality of your current situation is right now and you define reality right we all do but you know you can you can decide how much detail you want to include in this how subjective you want it to be um, use the worksheet to to write down all your strengths we really want to know what our strengths are because that's going to be what propels your business and supersizes you the fastest is building on those strengths. And opportunities, again, looking around the marketplace, looking at your competitors, what are their customers saying is missing from their products or service or their offering? What is missing? And later on, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll say, well, is that something we wanna provide or is that something we don't wanna provide either? And there's an opportunity for someone else to start a business and provide what's missing for other people. But we wanna know what those things are that our target audience, our ideal customer wants, so we can decide on purpose whether that's something we wanna add or not to our offering. So today is all about focusing on what we do really well, focusing on our strengths, and looking for opportunities out in the environment, out in the world, to say what else is possible for us to offer. How could we serve our clients even better than we're serving them today? What else do they want? What else do they need? This is a place that we ask those questions. That's it for today. Focus on what you do well. Isn't this the fun part? It is, it's the fun part. So focus on this, make as big a list as you can think of. And if you don't know, ask some of the people you work with, ask some of your former clients. Uh, hint, hint, good way to get testimonials is by talking to your, your former satisfied clients or your current clients. Ask them, hey, what are we doing really well for you? And then tomorrow you can ask them, what could we do better? Because that is where you really get to shine 
as a business owner and to supersize your business. That's it for today. Talk to you with the next lesson, which is, is probably going to be easier to come up with the list for, but it's going to be the things that we need to decide. Are we going to make a change in them or are we just going to keep them as they are? Or are we going to decide that that's something that we want to improve to better serve our customers? Guess what? You're the business owner. You get to decide all of this for you and for your business. That is one of the most powerful, fun things about having your own business. All right. I'll see you soon for today's scavenger hunt clue. Let's go ahead and put hashtag awesome in the comments below because we want to focus on all the things we're awesome at. That's it. See you tomorrow. Bye.